This lesson deals with supplemental problem 13.1. You can find this problem in the ECE 202 ebook in the chapter 13 supplemental problem starting on page 1. Given a triangle wave with an amplitude of A and a period of T0, can you find the Fourier series of this waveform with the aid of symmetry? Sketched here is f of t. We're going between a plus a and a minus a, and then we're repeating that in a period of t0. I need to write an equation for my waveform, and I really have two different values. I have a value here, and I have a value here. Let's write the equation for the straight line between 0 and t0 over 2. The slope is going to be negative, and the slope is the rise over the run. I have a rise of 2a, and I have a run of t0 over 2. 2a divided by t0 over 2, I get a 2 times a 2, so I get a 4, a over t0 times t, and then I have a negative slope. The y-intercept is the value when t is equal to 0, and that's going to be equal to a. When I set t equal to 0, my then value of f of t is just equal to a. For the interval here between minus t0 over 2 and 0, I have the same equation, but just the opposite slope. Let's change the sign. Next, we need to take a look at if we have any symmetry in our waveform. So if I take my waveform and I replace t by minus t, that takes this axis and folds it over along the y-axis into the left-hand side. I get exactly the same waveform. That's even symmetry. That's going to imply that b sub n is equal to 0 for all n. Let's next check to see if we have odd symmetry. So odd symmetry would be doing the same thing and then changing the sign. But we've already seen that once you fold this over, we get the same waveform. So we don't have odd symmetry. So let's test for half wave symmetry. If you recall, we're going to shift the waveform half a period take this waveform and just move it over to the left. So then I've got this point is over here, and clearly that's not the same as what I had before. But if I take the negative of that, flip that over, then I get the same wave shape. So I do have half wave symmetry. That implies that a sub n is equal to zero for n even. Let's go back to our definition of the Fourier series. And a sub n was equal to two over t zero, the integral over a period of our function times the cosine of two pi n f naught t. Now since I have two different values for my slopes, I'll have an integral over each of the half periods that I had, so from 0 to t over 2, and from minus t, 0 over 2 to 0. Function f of t times the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t, and then goes for our second equation with a positive slope. If we product the two terms, let's multiply the cosine times the first term, which is going to be just a, bring that out in front, as 2a over t 0, and then times the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t. The same thing true for the bottom term. Pull that a out, I got the same expression. Now what's left over is this times this, and that's what's here. At 2 times a minus 4a over t0, and another t0, so I get a minus 8a over t0 squared. And then I have the integral of t times the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t. I have the same results here, but with a plus sign. I put these two back together again. I have the integral from minus t0 over 2 to t0 over 2, which is one period, of the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t. But the integral of the cosine over a period is equal to 0. So this whole term should just drop out. We're left with these two terms. Now I have a t times the cosine of something times t dt. Let's go back and recall our integration formula. So if I have the integral of x, the cosine of ax dx, that's equal to 1 over a squared cosine of ax plus x over a times the sine of ax. In our case here, x is equal to t and a is equal to 2 pi n f naught. Let's apply this identity to our integration terms for a sub n. I have a minus 8a over t0 squared. And I've got this term here. So I got a 1 over a squared, my a squared, cosine of ax. And then I have x over a. So here's my x over a. And then the sine of ax, where x is t and a is equal to 2 pi n f naught. And we're going to integrate that from the upper limit to the lower limit. The second term is the same, except that we have a plus sign in front. So now let's plug in the upper limit minus the lower limit. Plugging in t is equal to t0 over 2, t0 over 2, t0 over 2. And then I've got a minus t equal to 0, so I've got the cosine of 0, and then I've got 0 times the sine of 0, which is just 0. From the second term, we'll do the upper limit as 0, so it'll be the cosine of 0, divided by our term here squared, and then I've got 0 times the sine of 0, so that's again 0, and I'm going to plug in minus t0 over 2, plugging that in over here, I get a minus t0 over 2, I'm also subtracting the second term, and then likewise plugging in for this term a minus t0 over 2, and then the sine where t is replaced by minus t0 over 2. Let's clean up some of these terms. I have a t0 and a t0 canceling. Likewise over here, likewise over here, and likewise over here. I also have the 2's canceling here and here, here and here, here and here, and likewise here and here. So then I'm left with a minus 8a over t0 squared. And I have the cosine of n pi, but I'm considering n to be odd. When n was equal to 1, you have the cosine of pi, which would be equal to 180 degrees, which would be equal to minus 1. 
And then if you add 360 to that, you get the same value again. So just get a minus one divided by our denominator, which is two pi n, and then f naught is one over t zero. So we're gonna square that quantity. The sine of n pi when n is odd, so when n is equal to one, the sine of pi, which would be the sine of 180, which is equal to zero, add 360, add 360, you get zero each time. So you get a zero for those terms. The cosine of zero is one, so we're dividing that by two pi n, f naught is one over t zero, quantity squared, and then we have a zero. For our second set of terms, we have 8a over t0 squared. Cosine of zero is one, so we're gonna divide that by two pi n, and then f naught is one over t0, and then quantity squared, have a zero. You have the cosine of n pi, but that's equal to minus one, double minus sine in front, and then we'll place f naught by one over t0, and then we have the sine of n times pi, again, when n is even, that's equal to zero. I have a t0 squared, and I have a t0 squared reciprocal term in each of these, so if I multiply that through, those cancel. It's gonna cancel with this, and cancel with this, and likewise over here, I'm gonna cancel with this and this. I have a minus and a minus, I have a plus 8a, and then I have a one over two pi n squared, zero, and then I've got a minus and a minus again, so I have a plus one over two pi n quantity squared. From here, I also have a plus one over two pi n quantity squared, and then one more of those of one over two pi n quantity squared. So I've got four of these. If I take the two and square it, I get a four, and those cancel. And I'm left with an 8a divided by the quantity n pi squared for n odd. Figure 13.4 in our textbook has a listing of different waveforms and their Fourier series, and this agrees with what was shown for a triangle wave. And this is supplemental problem 13.1.